This has got to come out. Hey everybody, Kyle here with Spicer Designs. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to install a 200 amp underground service. This is the meter can style, not the pedestal style. And I'm going to be installing it right here. Not so much here, but right here. Get the point? Now, just to be clear, I am in Southern Indiana. Depending on your county or municipality, they may require different things. So if you live in Northern California, they might do it a different way. This isn't necessarily a how-to video. It's more of just a reference. That way you know what you're getting into if you want to take on something like this, if your county even allows you to do so. Let's get started. All right, there are two major components to this. We have our 200 amp meter can, and we have our 200 amp main breaker panel. This is a 30 space QO panel. I'm a big fan of QO panels. Not a fan of Seaman or Eaton or even the Square D home line panels. QO is where it's at. So this wall right here is just on the opposite side of where I was just at. And we're gonna be basically nippling right through the wall into our panel. So the first thing I wanna do is get the meter can mounted. We'll get the panel mounted and then we'll do all the other crap after that. Another thing I wanna be very clear about, I am a union electrician. I have been for just less than 20 years. I'm not currently working with the union anymore. I'm doing my own thing, not electrical, basically YouTube and some metal work. This job right here is for a friend. There's no money being exchanged except for material. I mainly just wanted to make a video on it. All right, because of the height differences inside and outside, really the only option we have here is the bottom hole of the meter can. And then you can either have the main breaker on the bottom or the top of these panels. You can flip them, line. We can read it and line upside down. That is why. So we're going to have it on the bottom and we're going to be coming in the bottom right here. So I'm going to get these popped out. We can get our connectors in and start measuring everything out. We'll go through the material as we do this. Between the two panels, we're gonna have an inch and a half EMT nipple. Gonna use this compression fitting on the outside and a set screw fitting on the inside. So we'll knock out these concentric knockouts to an inch and a half. This is probably gonna be kind of a boring video. All right, so being that this is a pole barn and we have the ribbed steel, uh, these ribs are not for pleasure. We're gonna have to do a little furring here. And to do that, we're gonna use some 7 8 unistrut. That'll bring us out an eighth of an inch past these ribs. And I wanna make sure that I place this in a spot where I can mount it and I want it to look clean. And what I wanna do is get right underneath this girt. So we're gonna drill from the inside out. That way we can stay nice and tight to it. All right, now that we've got our hole in the side of the building, hope it's in the right spot. Now I want to get the 7 8 unistrut mounted between the two girts here so we can mount it to it. This might seem high, but it's because grade isn't all the way up yet. So we're going to want to be something like uh, maybe 44 inches. All right, we're gonna mount this strut up now. I have a mark right here, which is where the top of the meter is gonna be. 
in regards to this hole. And I'm gonna be using a two inch or inch and a half Tapcon with an inch and a quarter fender washer. I like using these Tapcons on the exterior because they're pretty beefy. All right. This one's gonna have to get creative. I don't want to disturb the sheet metal screws. I will drill those out with a unibit so the sheet metal screws can pop through. All right, you can see right there where I used a unibit. That way that sheet metal screw could pop through without disturbing it. The same with right there. All right, now we're gonna use these spring nuts right here. These are quarter 20 spring nuts and these quarter 20s with the fender washer on them to mount the meter. I'm just gonna pop these things in just kind of go in and you turn them. They kind of lock in place and then you can slide them up and down if you want. Then we got like 12 inch centers. Okay. I ended up having to drill new holes for these so I'll put some silicone in those other holes that I popped out. Oh, that looks good. That looks so good. Nice and level. We got our hole, it's looking pretty good. Let's check the inside. All right, there's our hole on the inside. Nice and even around there. That is where I'm going to fill it with silicone. And I taped off that house wrap because I didn't want any of those shavings getting down in between the sheet metal. So now we can put our nipple in here. Oh yeah. Get our panel mounted. We're gonna have to fur out these girts a little bit. Probably just do another strip of two by four up high and down low. That should give us enough and we can get that little nipple in there. So we'll get this panel mounted up next and then we can start on the outside piping. Green 5 -8. Tighten these set screws back here. All right, there it is, panel is mounted. Nice and clean, just nipples right through the wall. Now, since this is a new service and this main breaker is the first means of disconnect, this is where we're going to bond this panel. So we're gonna use this bonding screw that comes in it. It's gonna look something like this. With the screw hanging out. Take that bonding screw and we're gonna run it through the neutral bus and it'll go right through the back of the actual panel enclosure. And there is a designated spot for it right there. Now, any loads that you bring into this panel, all the grounds and the neutrals will all tie to the same bus. It won't be unless you install a sub panel, then you would run a ground wire out of here. It would go over to your new sub panel and there would be a separate ground bar in that panel. Not this one though. <laughs> Next important step, we're gonna install the ground bushings on this inch and a half nipple, both on the panel side and on the meter side, just so you don't forget later. Here is the ground bushing. This is what it looks like. You can remove this mechanical lug or reposition it however you want. I like to take it off and I put it on there. There's also another set screw on here that bites into the threads. That'll bond this bushing right to that connector. All right, now we can go ahead and tighten that little set screw. That'll drive it into the threads. I need a stubby. Okay, and we'll get to that ground bushing later. Let's do the outside. Same deal, we're just gonna screw this on the threads of that inch and a half nipple going to the panel. Easy. 
Easy, easy. All right, now that we got the panel and the meter both installed, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a little cross brace on right here with 7 8 strut. And the way these meter cans are set up, if you come out of the bottom with a two inch pipe, some places require a two and a half inch or a three inch. This REMC only requires a two inch. If you put that piece of seven eighths behind it, it will give you the perfect amount of distance to strap it where it stays nice and level. So we're gonna get this installed. I'll have to do a little bit of digging here and then we can install our ground rod. We'll pretty much be done out here and then we can go back inside and there's only a couple more steps after that and we'll be done. So now I get to dig in the rock. Hell yeah. Well, that was straight up rock. I did not hit any dirt in there. The homeowner did say that they brought a lot of fill in because we're on a hillside right here. He was not lying. Now the REMC in this county specs that we have this two inch pipe stubbed down one foot below grade. Realistically, grade should be somewhere here at the bottom of this board. And I'm about two foot right now. So I'm gonna stub it all the way down there because we are on this hillside and then they can dig it out the rest of the way when they go to shove their wires up through this thing. So we are gonna be using a piece of two inch Schedule 80 PVC. Very important, Schedule 80, not Schedule 40. Anytime you're running PVC exposed above ground, it is technically supposed to be Schedule 40. Damn, flies. Or you can stick a piece of two inch rigid down there. I just don't have access to a threader right now, so PVC is my friend. And we have a piece of half inch rigid. We're gonna be using this for the ground wire. And we have a eight foot long ground rod by five eighths in diameter. We're gonna be pounding this sucker down here. More manual labor. First, I'm gonna get this um, concentric knockout busted out to two inch. We'll get our connector in there and move on. Okay, I don't wanna to jump too far ahead. I'll go ahead and explain what we got here. Down at the bottom, this two inch, I've got a connector with a plastic bushing just to soften that edge for their wire to come up through. And I've got a two inch rigid strut strap. This is a two piece strut strap that secures it nicely and it's within three foot of that box. You really don't need any more than that. Then I've got a two inch PVC connector here with the two inch lock ring and a two inch plastic bushing. Now this is where they're gonna bring their utility wire up into. It's gonna come up and it's gonna terminate into these upper lugs and the neutral will be right here in the middle. And then through this one is where our wire is going to come through to the panel. Now you can see this hole, it's because I it up. For whatever dumb reason, I just had a brain fart and I popped this hole out. They actually specify that you put it on the outside, whether it's this side or that side, so they can come straight up around and land their wires. So definitely keep that noted. And then on the back side here, you can see this other half inch knockout right here. That is going to be for a half inch piece of rigid. That's basically just gonna run down and stub out just at ground level and it'll attach to our ground rod, which we'll do that right now. All right, we have our eight foot ground rod pounded down and I have it just slightly below the end of the half inch rigid. And inside we've got a lock nut on the bottom of the thread, lock ring on the top, and then we've got a ground bushing, very important ground bushing, ground bushing, you'll see why. Next thing we're gonna need is a threadless, rigid half inch connector. And right here in my hand, called the JPS 100. This is a grounding strap that's going to ground our wire and that pipe to the ground rod. We also have a 5 8 acorn clamp, and you'll see what we do with that here in a minute. So the first thing we're gonna do is slide that acorn clamp, just let it fall down on the dirt. Next, we're gonna take a piece of number four copper this could be bare copper i have a piece of thhn we'll talk about that in a minute what i'm going to do is just shove it down the pipe first i'm going to get the length that i need basically we're going to go all the way down to the bottom of this hole somewhere in there now i'm going to put my thumb right where it's at the end of the pipe pull it out some more and i'm going to strip about an inch above that and i'm going to strip all this copper out of course my razor blade sucks so now that this is stripped out at the end we're going to shove it back up and you want that bare copper about an inch up in the pipe. And we're gonna come to the top side and do the same thing. But this time I'm only gonna strip out enough to get me through these two ground bushings. And you'll see what that looks like when I'm all done with it. After it passes through these bushings, it's then going to land right here on this little bus by itself. Okay, easier to show you than to explain it. So you can see where that number four comes out of the pipe. It's all stripped out. It goes through the first ground bushing on the half inch pipe. And then it weaves through to the ground bushing on your inch and a half. And then very important that you keep it out of the way of the opening, just so you have room to run your wires. And then it comes up and it lands right there in our ground terminal location, which is also part of the neutral. And it's very important that you identify the wire that it is ground. You need to at least have two stripes on it, or I think like two inches of color coding, whatever. This part is very 
tedious and it may be kind of frustrating, there's a good chance you might throw some tools, maybe cuss out an old lady. Um, that's perfectly normal. It, it happens to the best of us. So just be patient. You'll get it. Okay, now for another fun part. We're gonna take our threadless rigid connector right here, screw it into the JPS 100 strap. I'm gonna lock that thing down. I really should have my other pair of channel locks. We're gonna slide our wire through this. Slide that onto there. And we do need to tighten that. Come on, piece of crap. Yeah. Okay, make sure I didn't knock it out of level. Oh yeah, we're good. JPS 100, threadless connector. We're gonna come through, squeeze it down nice and tight. And then you're gonna run that copper wire down and clamp it with the acorn clamp. That's basically it for the grounding out here. All right, now for the service entrance conductors, what I've got here is some 2-aught THHN. Being that this is a residential application, you can get away with using 2-aught. I'm in Indiana, where you're at, maybe they don't allow that. They might make you use 3-aught, whatever. So I like to do the neutral first because it sits back the furthest. And what I like to do is get the end stripped out what the f is that thing? Jesus. Sorry about that. I like to do one conductor at a time. We're gonna land it inside and then we'll land it out here. All right, I like to get it formed in. The neutral is the lug in the middle, formed in there. Next very important thing is to phase it, especially your neutral. Again, two stripes or three if you're feeling crazy. And pop that in, pull this out. This will just slide out the bottom. I actually meant to grab some no locks. It's good to put a little bit of no locks on here. More for the aluminum conductors than the copper, so we'll be fine. These are a little tighter. Now we can just slide this back in. There's not a whole lot of room to work in these meter boxes. You wanna be very careful when you tighten these because they're attached to a plastic insulator and these can snap, so. Be very mindful when you're tightening these. So I'm gonna do the same thing for both of the hot conductors, L1 and L2, and then we'll take an overall look at it once I'm done. All right, we've got everything landed in here. Neutral, ground, line one, line two. I am gonna have to come back and put a knockout filler in here. Not a big deal, it happens. And then all I've left to do is put this duct seal. This is kind of like clay, like putty. And I'm gonna have to wrap it all around these wires and basically seal up any air from getting through that pipe. That's gonna help with any kind of condensation so that your breaker panel doesn't get full of condensation, rust out, corrode, and basically turn to shit. Otherwise, we are done out here. We just gotta put that cover on. And then the inside, we are landed. Line one, line two, neutral. Then you can see on that neutral bar, there's another terminal that is for our ground. So another piece of number four comes around, picks up our ground bushing, and that's that. And of course, we got our bonding screw. And then we can just throw on these little caps that they give you just to protect you from the energized lugs. Technically for a service, we are supposed to have a dedicated panel GFI on a 20 amp dedicated circuit. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that right now. I did forget a couple of breakers, so I'll have to land that later. But if you don't know how to hook up an outlet, you probably shouldn't be taking on a service. Well, that pretty much wraps this one up. Hopefully this was a good reference for you. I know this video had a real how-to feel. May have even gotten your how-to juices flowing but it was not. This is a video for reference purposes only. Make sure you follow all your local city and state code requirements. Now, every situation is a little bit different. Could be a service on the outside of the house. Maybe it's a pedestal style that's going down into a basement. This is a pretty basic setup where it's just poking straight through the wall. Anyways, I hope it was helpful for you. If you got any questions, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.